Welcome to This Organized Life. If you're a mom, wife, or coffee lover seeking advice on how to reduce clutter and reclaim time, look no further than your host, Lori Palau, founder of Simply Be Organized and author of Hot Mess, A Practical Guide to Getting Organized. For a lot of people, clutter is their dirty little secret, but it doesn't have to be. Each week, we will share practical tips, chat with experts, and provide strategies on how to keep you organized. I hope that by sharing our stories, you feel a little less alone and more empowered to tackle the areas that are holding you back. So let's get started. Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of this Organized Life podcast. I am your host, Lori Palau, and I am really excited that you're here. Um, If this is your first time tuning in, welcome to our show. Um, We're here all the time, Mondays and Thursdays. And um, our guest today is awesome. I love our Thursday episodes because I get to talk with such great people, whether they're thought leaders or subject matter experts, or they have a, a, a product or a course or whatever in the world of organization, productivity, routines, you name it. We are here to try to help you be like, finding that Zen spot wherever you're feeling a little chaotic. And today's guest is awesome. Her name is Jenny Leighton. I'm going to bring her out in a second. And we were introduced, I guess, a few months ago and immediately hit it off. We have so many kind of parallels and similarities in kind of the way that we both approach organization that it's really kind of a means to an end, right? As much as we all love an organized space, it's really about how it makes you feel. And she's a mom herself. She's got five humans. So she's definitely has me outnumbered in that area, but she's been working with women for years, trying to help them kind of find that sweet spot between organization productivity and, a, you know, I'm air quoting balanced life. And so I had the pleasure of chatting with her on her show. We were talking about Enneagram and Clutter. And I said, I'd love to have you come and share your wisdom with our audience. So without further ado, let me welcome my friend, Jenny Layton to the show. Welcome, Jenny. Hi, Larry. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I am too. I am too. This is um, this is definitely a conversation that I've been looking forward to. So um, as you know, I just gave like a sort of top line overview about you, but in your own words, kind of dive into a little bit of the nitty gritty about who you are and what you do. Okay. Yeah. I think that there's probably two really good things for listeners to know about me. The first one is how I got into organizing and why I like it so much. And I think it's because I'm just kind of a driven person. There's a lot I like to do. And I think I discovered early on that the more you want to do, the more organized you need to be. I mean, you mentioned balance a little earlier. We all have a lot of parts of our lives that are moving all the time. And so when we're organized, we, it, it, oh, my AirPod just came out. (laughs) Okay, there we go. When we're organized, it just expands our capacity and our bandwidth so that we can do more. And so early on, I I was uh, barely in a direct sales company. I sold for Pampered Chef for about a year and I was doing so well and it was so fun. But this was the time that I also was stepping into motherhood and really managing a home and being that adult. And I couldn't do it all. And it was so sad because I had to step away from that business so I could figure out the home life. And I think that's what I spent a big chunk of my life doing is how do you automate at home? How do you get really organized so you have more bandwidth for everything you wanna do? So that's how I got into it. And and there's a lot of parts of my life that I like. I have five kids. I love to play pickleball. I run this business. I love to be with friends and family and be outdoors. And so it just organization allows me to do all of these things. So I think that's the first thing that's important for people to know. Yeah. And I just want to interject because I, I kind of left this out as I was kind of riffing your your introduction. I mean, you also have a podcast. Um, it's the Life Organized Podcast, which of course we'll link to. So for all of our podcast listeners, you'll go check it out. Um, and your company is The Happy Gal. And it's, first of all, right. it's the cute, it's the cutest podcast. I mean, it's the cutest <laughs> website. You have to go check it out. It's called The Happy Gal. And I love what you said. Um, I love what you said about the more that you want to do, the more organized you have to be. And I, that so resonates with me because that's like a through line in my life when people are like, how do you do it all? How do you do it all? I'm like, first of all, I don't, I don't do it all, but I do a lot of things. I, it's, it is. And I credit the fact that I have these systems and strategies, whether it's automation or just things that I delegate or what that are routine so that I don't have to take up time or mental bandwidth 
recreating the wheel every single time. Right, right. It's, it is. It's all about automating. And so that's what I love about organizing. And the other thing that I think is super important is that the approach that I take to organizing is very based on how to work with your brain. Because if you're not cooperating with the way your brain likes to work, your brain's going to shut it down. And I think we've found kind of a great synergy between the two ways you and I approach organizing, because you're very big on helping people understand their personality and kind of how they need to approach it uniquely, which I think just complements the fact that yes, and all brains work the same way too. All brains are wired to survive. They need to seek pleasure, avoid pain and use as little effort as possible. And knowing that, that that's the language the brain speaks, we're going to take your personality and take into consideration that everything's got to appear pretty easy to the brain. And it's nice to give good strategy, but how can we communicate that with our brain so that we don't procrastinate, lack motivation, you know, just not follow through. And so everything that I teach, it, it kind of comes through that lens of, all right, so how are we going to cooperate with our brain so that we really want to get it done because discipline only lasts so long and then we oh, stop. And it I love through. that. I love that. So if somebody's listening out there and they're going, how do I know how my brain works? Right? Like I know, like, how do I articulate that? And I think that's a big thing because I talk a lot about the communication piece, like, cause we see the world through our own lens yeah. and we just assume it's like, everybody sees it like the way that we do, or this is just obvious, or I don't know how do you put the words into it. So if somebody's listening out there and they're struggling and they feel like they've been white knuckling through life and they want to get that brain clarity without giving away your secret sauce, like what are just some ways that people can go about kind of identifying that? Well, I think the first thing when you're working with your brain is just the awareness that your brain is kind of like the VP of operations. You are the CEO, your brain's the VP and you delegate so much to your brain. I mean, it, it runs the whole show, but it likes to be in charge. And because it doesn't like things that are uncomfortable and it doesn't want to have to work hard, a lot of times it tries to override your desires. Like I'm going to get organized. I'm going to get up on time. I'm going to go exercise. Like all of those good intentions that you have as the CEO, the P VP is like, nope, we're not doing that. That's too hard. And we listen to the VP a lot, right? Like our brain communicates to us through our thoughts. And so we'll think, you know, I'm going to go do this, but then we'll have the thought, well, I'll do it later, or that's too hard, or I don't want to. And that's where our thoughts really start to get us off base. That's how our brain kind of talks us out of it. And so just understanding that relationship of you are not your brain, you need to manage your brain, you need to know how to communicate with your brain, because when you do, and you can get it on your side, then you can follow through. So everything that we do at the Happy Gal is all through this technique of how do we partner with our brain and communicate with it, rather than trying to white knuckle it and win it over, because eventually you're going to get exhausted, and the brain's going to win out and you're going to stop. As a data science, like wannabe geek, like this, I was like, I, I just love everything about that because I think for so many of us, there is that shame, that frustration of I tried and I fail, or why can't I do this? Or why doesn't this just come naturally to me? And again, then we wind up getting into this shame cycle and frustration. And then we just kind of wave that white, like wave that like white flag of defeat, you know, and right. It doesn't have to be that way. And I think that's what you and I are both trying to say. No, there's a, there's a better way for you. And it doesn't have to be hard. It could be a simple right. way. Right. Yep. That's how we just cooperate with our brain. And then a really great example of how we do that is through routines. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that think, I don't like routines. You've got some personalities on the Enneagram spectrum that's like, no routines, no thank you. And I always tell those personalities, well, actually, you use a lot of routines. You just don't realize it. I mean, think about when you do your hair. Think about when you make a sandwich. Are you having to follow instructions? Your brain's following this protocol that is a routine because brains love routines. We might have a bad association with them. We may not relate to them very well. We may not have known how to create them very well in the past. And maybe that's why we think we don't like them, but truly every brain responds to mindless work. It's what it seeks. It's what it loves. And so when I tell someone part of getting organized is adopting routines and they don't want to do that, we back up and say, actually you do, your brain loves it. So we just need to engineer a routine with the way your brain likes to work. And that's a big part of the work that I do with people is how do we communicate that? How do we simplify it? How do we remember the brain 
seek pleasure, avoid pain, use as little effort as possible. Great. That's the language we're going to speak. And if what we want to automate is getting ready in the morning, then we're going to engineer a routine that cooperates with that. Keep it really simple, make it really clear, figure out ways to slip it into what we're already doing. It just makes it a lot easier for us to cooperate. And then look, you and your brain, you're on the same page, CEO, VP, you've got a good business happening, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And it's, and I, oh, and I, I, again, completely agree with what you're saying. And I tell people all the time, we all have routines and habits either by design or by default, you know? So right. maybe you don't, you go like, I don't have a morning routine. And I'm like, okay, tell me about your morning. And you're it's like, every morning I went up screaming at my kids to grab their stuff and somebody's looking for their, you know, somebody forgets their lunch and this one's got their homework and can't find their cleats and whatever it is. Well, that chaos is a form of, a, of a routine. It's just a poor routine. It's just not working right. for you. But if that's what your morning looks like on the norm, that's a, that might be just by default. So let's create something, but it seems harder. I think for a lot of people to think of the intentionality, but really right. You're putting the work in on the front end to be intentional about it, but then it becomes automated as opposed to the chaos that you're living in right now. So, um, yes, I have a really great quote that I think gives a little perspective into that, that you either pay the price of success or you pay the price of failure, but either way you pay a price. So the price of failure is I'm not going to be intentional up front. I'm going to be reactive. I'm going to let life kind of live me. And now I have to pay the price of feeling flustered and overwhelmed and behind or I'm going to pay the price of success up front, which is a little harder because you have to be proactive, but boy, the price of success is so much less than the price of failure because you just get to coast through optimal circumstances. I love it. Let's, I want to go back and just talk about your kids because we kind of like mentioned it and glossed over it. So you have five kids, like that's a lot, five five kids a lot. And what's the, and what's the age range just for context where people. So my youngest is 12 and my oldest is 24. Okay. So, I mean, you, You've, and how long have you had your business? Like 10 years. Right. So, I mean, like literally, especially your youngest, like your kids have grown up and you've navigated motherhood from toddlers to teens and now into young adulthood. Um, So you've really kind of walked through every step of the, every season. Um, So you obviously have experience just from mothering on developing these routines. And I'm wondering if you could just talk about, because at the time that this is dropping, we either got people that are just kind of getting back into a school routine, or you're just about to embark on that back to school routine. And I really wanted to bring you on here to just talk about some specific things that maybe people can, that people can do to incorporate, to simplify their lives and also maybe empower their kids to develop these life long, healthy habits? Yeah. Okay. So I think there's, there's kind of a few different ways I want to answer that. And you can tell a lot about, and like if a professional organizer and a life coach had a baby, it would be me, you know, (laughs) like we just really have to look at like, again, how is our brain going to handle things? What can we expect? And so I like to just kind of set the tone with this idea of like, what is happening as school starts? What's our brain doing? How are we reacting? How are we feeling? Because if we can kind of map it out mentally, it just makes the whole journey a lot easier. We kind of know where we're going. And I think the big thing that's happening, and, and we get this on a sense, but I think it feels really good to just kind of speak it and lay it out. Um, we're in a massive transition from summer to fall or from back to school and transition is just always messy. And before I had these words back in the day, you know, I've been doing this business for 10 years, worked into it for a few years. So let's go back maybe 15 years, maybe 20 years. We would call September, my September breakdown. And it was predictable. And my husband, you know, I'd fall apart. My husband would be like, remember (laughs) you did this last year. Oh yeah. It's the September breakdown. What I know now is that it's just transition and transition is messy. And a really great visual for transition, I think is, again, our brain loves to just be on autopilot. It just loves, you know, whatever's happening, it likes whatever is normal and comfortable. And I compare that to like, you're on the freeway, you're on cruise control, on the freeway, just going. And then there comes a point where you've got to get off the freeway. You have to take it off cruise control. You've got to start paying more attention. You've got to look at the map and see where you're going. You run into traffic and the stoplights. And we don't like those type of interruptions. It just doesn't feel as natural and comfortable. It's just mindless 
going on and doing things how we were doing. So this transition time into school is a big time when we're getting off the freeway and having to start to revamp and look at the map and how are we going to do things. And so just recognizing that, hey, you're not going to be off the freeway forever. You're getting off, you're gassing up, you're going to get back on the freeway and then get going again. And just being able to have that expectation that like, that's the rhythm, like it's going to be bumpy mm. for a second, but you're going to be right back where you need to be. For me, that just helped give me the peace of mind that like, it's okay. You know, even though every year it it worked out. You forget about that in the moment. And it's just crazy how many times I have to remind myself, Hey, it's just the messy transition, that kind of messy middle. It's all right. We're going to get back on. So just let's just work through it. And, and I think the rest of the way we can answer that question is, okay, well, how do we create that map? You know, how do we know how to make those turns and what are the different pieces we need to do so that that transition is a little bit more seamless. And I love that conversation too, but I just think that whole visual is helpful to set the stage. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. And I think, you know, so many parents can relate to all of the tactical things, right? So you're like, okay, um, now I got to get more back. I got to get more strict on a bedtime routine. I have to start packing school lunches. Um, we have to get all the back to school supplies. We have to, so there's all of these these pieces of the puzzle that you have to, that, you know, we've kind of maybe laxed on because we've been, you know, in summer mode and now we've got to tighten the bootstraps. And I feel like every time you have to stop and start and stop, like you get back in, it's like, it's like when you work out and you're in a rhythm and you're working out and then all of a sudden you go on vacation and you don't work out and then you start to come back and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so hard. <laughs> Even though you were like totally doing it. Now it's like that re-entry just seems like a steeper hill to climb. And I, you know, so I guess, and I know there's not a one size fits all, right? This is not a prescriptive, you know, answer for people out there. But are there any kind of generalizations that people that parents can do out there to start to ease? Like you know it's coming, right? This isn't and this isn't a something that just pops up. Like, you know, back to school is happening on this day. Do you recommend like, okay, we're gonna start you know, two weeks before start getting back into a bedtime routine, we should start practicing making our lunches. Like, I, I'm just wondering if there's some specific strategies for people out there that are like, yes, I'm feeling this. I hear you, but I still don't know what to do about it. Right. Okay. So anytime we have like that chaos inside of us, like the panic, the stress, the overwhelm, that's what I call internal clutter. And so we need to take that internal clutter and make it external because then we can do something with it. So the mm -hmm. first thing I'd recommend is let's get out of your head onto a piece of paper, what you're so worried about. And I really love using the weekend sometime during the weekend on a Sunday or something to just really kind of take that time to like, okay, what do I have coming up this week? Let's get the internal clutter out onto the paper. What do I need to address? So there's a couple of things that I'd recommend in that scenario. And first off, Take that day, what any day of the week is fine. But if you can create kind of that regular routine of on Sundays, this is when I do it. This is when I kind of look at my schedule and plan my week and what do I need to be doing? Let's get it out on paper. What are you most worried about? Great. Okay, now what are we going to do to solve that problem? We'll talk about some more tactical things too in just a minute that I think yes, will help. No, you're, you're but, all good. But just, I think this is just a way that here's a general answer that you can take this and make it really personal. So pull that out of your head and look at what that is. The other thing I'd like to do as I'm planning my week is then have a family meeting. And I think this becomes really important during these transition times so that the whole family can get on the same page. All right, we've got this coming up in a couple of weeks. Here's what we need to start changing. Or you ask for their feedback. You know, what type, what do you think we need to do to start getting ready? Um, I think having their buy-in is really important. I, I think there's this tendency to just kind of want to rush through it and just say, okay, this is how we're going to do it. But I always say with people, slow is fast is slow and slow is fast. So if I'm going to try to make changes really fast, it's going to take longer because I didn't ask for their buy-in. But if I can ask for them their ideas, you know, what they think needs to happen, it's a little bit of a slower process, but then they're on board. So it actually is a faster process. So can you meet as a family and can you start to just piece together, all right, what is this new rhythm? When is bedtime? When do we need to start practicing getting up? And what is school going to look like? 
we've got these new routines that need to come into play. What is the morning routine? And can you prior to school, write down that routine with the kids, print it out, put it in a dryer, a, a sheet protector with a dry erase marker, let them pull that out every day and kind of check their little marks off. And, you know, so that they know before school, after school, what are those routines and have them be a part of creating that. I think that's going to go a long way to establishing that new rhythm that's going to help that chaos just kind of start to subside and help you feel like you've got a grip on, you know, what that needs to look like once that new schedule starts. I love that. And if I can just kind of reiterate and piggyback on a couple of things you said, because I think it bears repeating. First of all, I love, I'm all, I'm a big brain dumper and I talk about that. I love the language of internal clutter and kind of getting that out. I think there's obviously people that have been longtime listeners of my show know that. So I love that. And the buy-in part is so great um, because I think we oftentimes as parents will just assume that we know what's best or the best way. And again, I'm not talking about asking your kids for permission. It's happening one way or another, but getting them included in the conversation to say like, okay, we're going to be doing this and getting their take on it may also let them share uh, a perspective that you didn't think of. You know, I just, we, last month we did um, a series all about ADHD and we talked about like my, my daughter was a guest on the show and like, again, her brain works differently than mine. So maybe something that makes sense to me doesn't make sense to her, but getting her in there knowing, okay, the end of the day, we need to leave for the bus at 745. There's more than one way to skid a cat. So my way might be more counterproductive than her way. And without including her in that conversation, just telling her how we're doing it. And again, it's going to be age appropriate, but I think there's so much value in parents including the kids in the conversation. I absolutely, I, I absolutely love that. I think that's, that's super important. Well, and if you zoom out and kind of look at the long-term plan of what you're doing with your kids, it's not just about getting them out the door this year at 745 on the bus. It's about how can I teach them principles that are going to help them get themselves out the door when they're in college or having their first jobs and living away. And so again, fast is slow and slow is fast take the time to help the kids learn the principles so that as they become more independent, they own this and they don't need to struggle the way that you did. It's just such a great gift you can give your kids. I, I mean, I just love this topic of what you give your kids because it's hard for women to want to take the time to get organized. It's hard for them to take the time to want to invest themselves in these programs and learning this content and making the sacrifice and taking the time but what a gift it is, not just to you, but to your family, because you are the major influence in their life. They're watching you. They're modeling their life after you. And so to be able to be a proactive woman and be able to give that to your family, that is such a gift. So it works so great in the short term, but the long term is just such a big payoff. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to continue this conversation. And you say something on your website that we're going to dig into, which is about maintaining your house in three hours. And that to me is worth talking about. So we'll be right back. Um, all right, Jenny. So let's talk a little bit about something that as I was preparing for this interview, and I knew we were going to talk about routines and whatnot, but I was kind of browsing around your website and you have right there a statement that says it takes you three hours a week to maintain your house. And as a mom of five humans, um, that just seems like for, I'm sure people are going, wait, what, what is her secret? I could spend three hours in one area. So I wonder if you could just talk a little bit about your own experience. Right. Well, when I told you, I really took some time to learn how to automate my life. I wasn't kidding. Yeah. <laughs> we really honed in these systems. Yeah. So, so I, look, I'm i sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. I want to hear all about this automation because I think, again, people automate at work, but, and they hear about that, especially in the entrepreneurial space, you talk about how can I automate it? But we don't always think about that in terms of our home and our home life. And I think that's a really, really important point that we're going to, I want to focus in on. Right. So in the strategies that I teach, we talk about the big five. There are five main things that every household has in common that need to be kept up on. And there can be more or less, but across the board, there are these big five. 
And so the real name of the game is how can I first become aware of what those five things are and then create routines that are going to automate it. And it's taken me time to work it into being three hours. Of course, it wasn't at the beginning, but you know how it is. It took so much focus and concentration to learn how to like back out of your driveway the first time or learn how to pull into a parking spot. Now you do it without even thinking about it. And so you can do the same thing with these big five tasks that every household has in common. And that's the piece that takes me, I've got it down to three hours and, you know, like laundry can take women all week and I I'm through laundry. It's, it's maybe a net of 30, 40 minutes of my time every week, you know? And so getting those systems into place is what lets me say three hours. Now, of course, there's the daily work, which is dishes and picking up and that's separate. But I'm just talking about like that weekly maintenance that keeps a household sharp and running three hours. Can you unpack for us what those big five are? Right. Yes, absolutely. So the big five, first of all, are cleaning and laundry. And I like to talk, it's ironic that I have five kids. This was not intentional, but these also kind of take on, um, children's personalities, which you do a lot with personalities in the Enneagram. So here we go. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. Okay. So the, the big five first cleaning and laundry, just like whatever cleaning you're going to do in your home. Um, and then laundry. And then those are the kind of the two kids that are pretty easy. And then you've got like the hard kid, you know, how you always kind of have that one that doesn't play <laughs> by the same rules that's going oh, through yes. your paper. So oh. paper becomes that kid that it takes a different strategy. So I teach that one in a little different way, but we just create a routine. And I mean, really paper used to take me a couple of hours a week to go through. I've got it down to about 15 minutes, you know? So um, paper's the third one. And then the second two are the twins because you kind of, you know, can't do one without the other. It's like, you know, they're, they're separate routines, but you can't, you change one diaper, you got to change the other diaper kind of thing. So the twins are menu planning and grocery shopping. And to whatever extent you want to get into that, if you're really into your health, then that's a huge priority. Or if it's just look, we just have to have food in the fridge. It still takes some planning to know what is what do I need to have for the week in my home? And then how am I going to get that food into my home? So those are the big five that I've automated and um, teach my clients and my students to do in about three hours a week. I love, I love this because you really have articulated and been very specific. And we talk a lot about that, about being specific in where do I need help? Where am I drowning? Where am I struggling? Where am I thriving? All of these things and looking at the different, you know, the, the different, I would say, um, departments of your, of your business, right? If you're the CEO and you have like the different departments and you've got all of these ones, which ones are, you know, which ones do you need help with? Because there are, I'm sure there are people that are listening that are like, I'm really good with menu planning and groceries, but I struggle with paper and mail or whatever. Or maybe there's right. people that are like, I struggle everywhere, you know, or some right. people. So I think you can lean in and I love it because especially if you are talking about other delegation to your spouse, empowering your kids, you know, what parts of this, I'm sure as you go into your teaching, what parts of this can you delegate to them? So yes, you're automating it to streamline for you, but it doesn't have to all be you. I would imagine it's, there's other people that are living in your house that can pick up the slack. Absolutely. There's no way I could clean my house in 45 minutes in a week. And that's about what I personally spend. So I do have my kids help, but it's a process, right? Of first, I need to be able to approach cleaning in an attitude that this isn't horrible and it's not overwhelming. It's just neutral. It's just what we do. I put in my AirPods. I listen to a podcast. I clean my bathroom. I mop my floors. Those are my jobs. And then I delegate other pieces to my kids. But that attitude that I've modeled to them has gone a long way for them to be able to follow through and not feel like this is the end of the world that I'm asking them to clean the bathroom. So I think that's part of it. But the other piece, if you look at the way we have to cooperate with our brain, there's a great parallel about how we need to cooperate with our kids as well. Remember the brain seeks pleasure, avoids pain, uses as little effort as possible. Does that sound like kids? It sure does to me. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so as I cooperate with my own brain and look at, okay, so to get this task done, I need to be really clear about what I'm asking my brain to do. I need to make it really simple and I need to have a really great trigger that takes me into action. Otherwise it's just too hard and I don't want to do it. And there's all this drama. 
All right. So as I've created that type of relationship with some of these routines with myself, I then know how to teach it to my kids. So I make it really simple, really clear. I help them see right where they can slip it into their day. Slow is fast, right? So it takes a little bit of time to set it up. But here I sit, you know, at this stage in my life and um, can manage the functioning of my home. We can automate it together. And, and so there are pieces that I definitely take on and take ownership for because those are the pieces that impact me the most. I don't want to delegate something that is going to really impact me in a way and make someone else responsible for that because I don't have control over that. So I make sure that what I delegate to them is a little lower impact, but I mm -hmm. teach them the right way to do it so that they can approach their jobs in this with the same ease that I approach mine. I love it. And it also, by incorporating the strategies that you're doing and that you're talking about, it also removes you from being the complete bottleneck. Like if you go away, like, I don't know how many people, how many of my personal friends or how many people have written into me, like, if I, I can't go away for a girl's weekend, or if I go away, I come back to chaos, yeah. which makes me not want to go away because I'm coming back because it's like everything ceases. It's like the entrepreneur that does all the work. And then the second you take a day off, like everything just, the, you know, the lights go out and everything just stops by, you know, yes, there's going to be pieces of the puzzle that might not happen, but the overall machine is still working. Right. Because yeah. you've set these things and there's a freedom in that for yourself as well, because you're like, I know I can, you know, I can go out with my friend. I can go to dinner. I can go away for a weekend. I can do these things without feeling like people aren't going to be able to function or I'm going to come back. And now I'm going to have double the work because I'm going to have to pick up on everything that didn't happen while I was away. Right. And so I love everything you just described. I can go to work, I can go out of town, I can go with my friends and come back and be okay. That is the price of success that we were talking about earlier. Remember that quote, you either pay the price of failure, or you pay the price of success. Either way, you pay the price, it is so worth it to pay that price of setting things up, creating a system, getting it organized so that you have that freedom and that bandwidth to do what you want. That's really why I help women get organized. It's not because I have a passion of cleaning my house. And it's not because I have a passion <laughs> about containers and labels. It's because I have a passion to empower and liberate people to do the same kind of things that I'm doing. That was so meaningful to me to realize that I could automate things and have that freedom in my life. I love helping women be able to figure that out, whether that's a job or a business or a goal they have, or just a hobby or just even more time with their family. It's just so worth it. I, I love it. Now, I think that's actually a perfect segue because I want to talk a little bit about you're, you have this organizing boot camp that you right. offer for people. Um, and I was just wondering if you could just share like who it's for, what people can expect from it. Like, what does it look like? Paint a little picture and, and tell people about it, because I'm sure there are people that are listening out there that go, oh my gosh, I, if like, I want, I want this, you know, I want yeah. in, I want this freedom. I love the way that you're approaching this and I could see myself doing it. I just don't have the current tools in my toolbox. Right. I know I'm always listening to something and I'm really inspired. And then afterwards I'm left to myself in the trenches going, well, so wait, how does this work? <laughs> what is this going to look like? Right. Right. Or I want this, but how do I go back getting it? Yeah. Yeah. So boot camp is just the entry level into what I'm talking about. And I don't care who you are, how organized you are, whatever it is, everybody needs what I teach in boot camp. I tell you, I teach the three core principles of an organized life. This is the foundation of an organized life. And here's what happens is Life cycles through different seasons. You know, we get, we're in summer, transitioning into fall, through the holidays, back into regular life. And we have these times where we're getting off the freeway and we don't really know what to do. What I point you back to every time are these three core routines that just smooth out the bumps and give you that really quick grip on what's happening so that you can settle back in to the things you need to do and get going again. And so that I think during this transition time back to school, those three mm -hmm. core routines, all my clients, all my students in my programs, as they're having the panic come up, it's like, hey, look, don't worry about any of it. Just all you need to focus on is those three core routines, plus the organized mindset, which is the other piece I add in the boot camp is there's just a few principles with the organized mindset that are so essential to keep you in this game. So your brain doesn't start spiraling out of control and you've got it. And that's what I give in the Get Organized Boot Camp. And how, just again, from a tactical perspective, like, is it, is it 
how long is it? Is it like a six week thing? Is it a four week thing? Is it like a self pace that you could just sit there and binge it yourself? Like just give some people some insight about. Right. So I've, I'm all about simple and quick. It's a three day thing. And Love so it. it's evergreen. You can do it anytime you want, but I'll tell you what's really awesome about the timing right now is I found the most success I have is when I lead people through a live version of boot camp. So mm. on September 11th, I'm doing a live three to four day event where we kind of vamp up and then do the three days worth where I take you through it. We've got a Facebook group. It's really fun to just see what everyone's doing and everyone's posting and all the breakthroughs that are happening. You've got that kind of community support. That is a really strong start to this season of getting back to school and kind of getting back in your groove. And so, and as a special offer, I'm also just giving you the first month of my life or of it nice membership, because as a membership, we're going to be doing this boot camp plus a few other little bonus things throughout the month. And so I want to bring as many people as I can into this group where for one month we are getting back on track. So boot camp is three days as a bonus. I'm going to give you access to the full month of some other things that we do that really support boot camp and kind of give you that next step. Um, but yeah, if you do it wow, on your own, that's, three that's days, huge. That's huge guys. Yeah. I didn't know. I knew she was giving me us a freebie, but I did not know that's, that's a really big, thank you so much for doing that for our people, Jenny. That is yeah. amazing. And I just also, cause we, you know, we, like you, we, you know, we've got a diverse group of people that listen and watch our show. And so we've got people that have little kids, people that don't have any kids, people that have empty, that are empty nesters. Is there a specific, I mean, we all need organizing strategies, right? But is there a specific kind of demographic that is ideal for your boot camp that is going to get value? Or is it pretty generic in the sense that it can be relatable for anybody? You know, it's generic because just like the big five, that is just across the board, every home needs to have those. Even if you live alone, you still have to have food. You still need to get your clothes washed, right? So the the core three, it's a lifelong process. I'm teaching my kids this summer, the core three, their own version, because kids need to know it. I have empty nesters in my memberships that are still working on the core three. This is a lifelong pursuit of just how to stay on top of these everyday basics of life. So it really does apply to every phase of life. So I think it's game for everyone. I love it. And is the core of three, is that, do we need to join the boot camp to find out what that is? Join the boot camp to know what okay, it is. Okay, that's fine. I love it. I love a good, I love a good teaser. It's awesome. No, 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 no. You've given some great things. Um, we're going to take a, so do you want, well, we'll, we'll include it in the show notes, but just tell our listeners before we take our last break, what is the best place that they can find you, connect up with you? And like, how do they sign up for this so that they okay. can get in on it? All so, right. So I'll just kind of give you the variety, however you like to connect with people. My website's thehappygal.com. My podcast is Life Organized with Jenny Layton. So you can find me there. Um, the boot camp is thehappygal.com slash boot camp. If you use the code TOL, normally boot camp's 49. It's 29 for you guys this month. And plus you get this month of membership in the Life Organized membership. So wow. I think it's a pretty sweet deal. So um, if you are a social media person get on Instagram, JL, the happy for Jenny Layton, JL, the happy gal. You can find me there, message me there. And I'm also on Facebook at the same, um, same handle, JL, the happy gal. Awesome. And again, we'll link to everything. It'll be in our show notes. It'll be on our podcast page, all the things that you need to connect up. And I am strongly encouraging everybody to go check this out because again, there's so many compliments and parallels to the way Jenny and I teach, but we have different niches. So I think really, if you like the stuff that we're doing, you're going to love the stuff that she's doing. So thank you so much again for, for offering this generous offer. Um, we're going to take one last break and then we'll be back for our hot mess minute. So sit tight. All right, Jenny. So um, this has been awesome. I'm so glad that we were able to make this happen. And I think the timing is perfect because regardless of where you are in your life, I always find that there's like a reset around that Labor Day time, you know, we go through as, you know, the seasons of our life. So even if you're not somebody with school age children at home, when you're feeling the major impact of things, it's still, it's still a time to readjust and tweak our routines, maybe tighten things up that we've kind of let lax, you know? And so um, this has just been great, great conversation. All right. So we always ask our guests a few wrap up questions. We love inspiration from our guests and I love 
to hear kind of what's inspiring you these days. So is there a book that you either are currently reading or maybe something that you come back to that has been really impactful that you want to share with our listeners? I'll share two. So the first one is The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. That is just one I keep coming back to. You can see that really everything I teach comes from the standpoint of how am I going to be able to get myself to do it? But how can I work with my brain? So it's all about habit. There's such good principles in that book. So I love that one. That's always a good one. Right now, what I'm loving is The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra. Oh, oh I like read a page and just need to sit and marinate in it. And then I come back and reread it. It's so packed with wisdom. Um, loving, loving that book. So I can I tell you that? Can I tell you a fun fact? Yeah. So my younger daughter um, is in college and she's a communications major. She writes for their school newspaper. She's a writer. And Deepak Chopra was coming, came last year. So last year, or the year before, I'm trying to remember. Um, it was, I think it was her spring semester, like when COVID times were like kind of on high alert. Anyway, he came and they were, they, they were in their like meeting and they said, he's coming. We need somebody to interview him. And wow. nobody raised her hand. And she's like, I'll do it. So she went and had an hour and a half meeting, sat down with him and wow. interviewed him. Yeah. Wow. I almost feel like I need your daughter's autograph. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was like, I was like, Logan, like, that's a big deal. Like she texted yeah. us like on our family group chat. And she's like, I'm going to be interviewing Deepak Chopra. And we were like, yeah. what? Add, add that to your resume. I said that to <laughs> her. Amazing. I, I said yeah. that to her. Um, but yeah, he's amazing. And and she said he's so wise and gracious and like just very, very personable. And yeah. just so I love yeah. that. And we'll link yeah. to, to both of those. And then of course, our final two questions, because we're all about honesty, authenticity, relatability here. And, and so many people have this misconception that when we work in this space, we have it all together at all times. And that's just fake news. <laughs> so right. um, even though you're probably thriving in more places than not, is there, um, tell us a little bit about where you right now feel like you're thriving and where you feel like a little bit of a hot mess. Yeah. Thank you. Because that whole, oh, I take care of my home in three hours. <laughs> you really come across the wrong way. I mean, I've worked and honed on that, but that doesn't mean that life doesn't still just catch up to me. And I think right now I'm going through a time where I've never had to work during the summer, but because of where my business is right now, where I started my podcast last fall, I launched my membership this January. I have clients that I need to continue seeing. I I'm having to still work this summer and that's been really messy. It's challenging the schedule and the systems that I have. And so I guess where I'm thriving and also where I'm struggling, is kind of in the same pace place where um, it doesn't look the way it's always looked. It feels messy because it's that transition. But also I have these really incredible routines that I can rely on. And so one of the things that I specialize in is, okay, well, how do we readjust it? How do we order? I was it? just, I was just going to say, I love that you said that because it goes to show that even when it's something good, like your business is thriving, you know, it doesn't have to be something negative. We have to tweak, even though we think it's like, Hey, it's been working for a while. Well, now there's something new that's happened in our lives. Maybe we had a job change. Maybe our business changed. Maybe we had a baby, whatever it was. And now we have to adjust those routines. We've got to say, okay, this worked for a while. Maybe what was working then isn't real realistic in this season of my life. So I love that you said that. Good. Yeah. I That's keeping it real. I've had some real messy moments. But again, I come back to, I love what I do. I love helping women get organized. I love having a full, rich life. I don't want to sacrifice anything. Thank heavens for routines and systems because that's what keeps us going and lets us do what we're doing. So yeah, thanks for letting me share that. And thanks for having me on the show today. This is great. We are great. We, yeah. <laughs> we speak the same language. We I are love great. it. I <laughs> love are. it. And the one final thing I want to say is perspective people. Again, you know, we, there's so, there's so much to be said for how we approach things. And I love what you said before about like modeling that behavior, that this isn't a drudgery that, you know, maybe you don't love cleaning toilets, but you know what, it's something that you got to do. And, and I think that 
our children, our spouses, our friends, people pick up on our vibe and what we're putting out there. And so just approaching things realistically, but finding ways to make it palatable, making these things, like you said, listening to a podcast, listening to music, calling a friend, whatever it is, find a way to kind of turn something that might seem mundane or wah, wah, wah into something that is not that, um, not that bad. And that's why we have happy gal. So we make it happy <laughs> on that. Boy, note, that sounds cheesy. Yes. <laughs> On that note, um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm sure you found value out of this conversation. And so I'm asking you, please do us a favor. Um, leave us a five-star review. Head on over and follow Jenny. If you're not list already listening to her show, check it out. It's a great show. And um, connect up with us on social media. We love hearing from you. And um, I don't think this will be the last time that you and I will be collaborating together. So um, thanks again so much. And until next week, guys, I'm Lori Plow. Peace out. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, please spread the love and share it with your friends. And if this is your first time joining us, make sure to click the subscribe button wherever you are listening so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, please leave us a review so other people know that our show is worth the listen. You can also find us on YouTube and Instagram at This Organized Life Podcast. And if you'd like to connect with us, you can head on over to our website at simply the letter B, like boy, organized.com, which is filled with tons of resources, including free downloads, checklists, links to our amazing organizing partners, and all of our digital offerings. I'll see you next week for another episode of This Organized Life.